Okay, in this video I want to talk about the primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures of proteins. So I figured I'd do this as like a problem. This could be something you might be asked to do on an exam uh, where they say just define what is meant by primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. So what is meant by the primary structure of proteins? Well, that's the sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide chain. So that's really simple. So you can just say the sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide chain. And that's about all you'd have to say. So it's just a sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide chain. So what is meant by the secondary structure of proteins? Well, that is a bit more complicated, not much more complicated. But that is the local spatial arrangements. So that's the local spatial arrangement of the backbone so of the backbone atoms without regard without regard for the side chains So in case you can't see this, it's the local spatial arrangement of the backbone atoms without regard for the side chain. So you're talking about the spatial arrangement of the backbone atoms of either the alpha helix, beta sheet, um, which are the two most common secondary structures. And we're not talking about the side chain, so we're not talking about the, the R group on each amino residue. So what is meant by the tertiary structure of proteins? is it's the three-dimensional arrangement of the entire polypeptide chain including the side chains. So it's the 3D arrangement of the entire polypeptide chain including, so this time we're including the side chains. So including the side chains. That's a 3D arrangement of the entire polypeptide chain including the side chains. So the last one to define is a quaternary structure. And the quaternary structure of proteins is the association of two or more subunits in three-dimensional space. So that is the association of two or more subunits in three dimensional space. That's the association of two or more subunits in three dimensional space. So that takes care of defining what is meant by the primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures. But the next question asks us to say, well, if I can get it to focus here, it says, for each of the above factors, list the forces that stabilize the level of structure. So it wants us to say what these forces are. So intermolecular forces or covalent bonds, uh, depending on what we're dealing with. Is going to be is basically what it's asking us to do. It's asking us to say what are these, what are these things. So, for the primary structure of proteins, it's just it's just covalent bonds. So, for the primary structure of proteins, it's simply covalent bonds that stabilize the structure because this is just the primary structure is just a sequence of amino acids. So that's like, you know, ASP. ASN, lice, and each one of these is um, held together, or as we know, by a peptide bond. So each one of these is connected by a peptide bond. 
in the primary structure. So it's just covalent bonds. Um, the secondary structure is actually only one of the intermolecular forces. It's only hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonds is the only force that stabilizes the secondary structure. So it's hydrogen bonding between, and, and for clarification, it's hydrogen bonding between the backbone atoms of the um, secondary structures. So it's hydrogen bonding between the backbone of the alpha helix, between the backbone of the beta sheet. Um, there are other secondary structures that are less common. Um, you can look those up in a textbook if you're interested, but generally in an introductory biochemistry course, you're going to be focusing mostly on the alpha helix and the beta sheet. So that brings us to the tertiary structure, which this is where we start seeing the three-dimensional folding of the protein. So we're starting to see the, how the protein will look in 3D space. And um, that has a few more things. We have ionic bonds that are stabilizing it. We have disulfide bonds. So disulfide bonds stabilizing it. And we also have things like hydrogen bonding stabilizing it as well. So we can also include hydrogen bonding in there. And if we want to, another important one for folding, so I'll include hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonds. And another important one that that's really important in the, when you start talking about protein folding is the hydrophobic. And I'll say hydrophobic effect or um, if you'd rather hydrophobic bonds, I mean, you could you could say that as well. I'll just call it, you know what I'll call it, for this case, hydrophobic interactions. So hydrophobic interactions. So ionic bonds, disulfide bonds, hydrogen bonds, hydropho and hydrophobic interactions are the tertiary structure. Now the nice thing about the tertiary and the quaternary structure when we start talking about these two is that these are all the same. So these will be the same over here. So the ionic bonds, the disulfide bonds, hydrogen bonds, hydrophobic interactions all occur in the quaternary structure as well. So that's kind of a nice thing. Once you know, once you know what is stabilizing the tertiary structure, you also know by default what's um, stabilizing the quaternary structure. So if I were to just say draw some of these interactions, like if they asked you to draw these on a test, which is another common thing that you might say. Um, I would just draw something like this and say like, oh, this is my protein or whatever, you know, this is my polypeptide chain. And then in here, I'd say, oh, well, this maybe is valine. So I'd say that this is, you know, CH, CH3 here, right? Like that. If I'm, And then I would maybe show something like this over here. I'd maybe say CH2, and then maybe I'd draw like a benzene ring over here for phenylalanine. This isn't the greatest benzene ring, but it will serve for our purposes here. So I'd say, okay, that's phenylalanine. And this right here, this interaction right here, is a hydrophobic interaction. So if I was asked to draw a hydrophobic interaction, this is what I would draw. And likewise, if I was asked to draw a disulfide bond, I would do the same. I would maybe continue this over here and I'd say, oh yeah, my polypeptide is moving like this. And I'd say CH2, S, S, CH2. And these are two cysteine residues. Remember, a disulfide bond is formed between two cysteine residues. So here's my disulfide bond and um, you know if you, if you really wanted to see I could also show I guess the ionic bond or ionic interaction if you wanted to see that real quick so again I draw something else like this and now I would choose two charged groups so maybe I would choose lysine here so lysine and I would say okay well that's uh, CH2 and there's four of those, and then that's NH3 with a positive charge on top of it, like that. And then I would have maybe uh, like glutamic acid or aspartic acid over here would be better. So I'd have CH2, 
C double bond O O minus. Sorry, it's a bit messy here, but basically what you just want to show is that there's a positive and negative ionic interaction going on there. And um, that's about it. So that's, that's how you might draw some of these interactions if you were asked to do it. These are the um, forces stabilizing them, so covalent bonds for the primary structure, secondary structures, hydrogen bonding between the um, backbone atoms, tertiary structure is ionic bonds, disulfide bonds, hydrogen bonds, and um, the hydrophobic interactions, and the quaternary structure is the same for the forces that stabilize them, and going back to defining them, the primary structure is just a sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide chain. Secondary structure is the local spatial arrangement of the backbone atoms in three in without regard for I almost said in three dimensional space, excuse me, without regard for the side chains. And the tertiary structure is the three dimensional arrangement of the entire polypeptide chain, including the side chains. And quaternary structure is the association of two or more subunits in three dimensional space. So those are some basic definitions. Again, this is a problem you might see on an exam that might ask you to draw these out and show what's going on. So I just thought I'd cover them now. Thanks.